praise god today we are going to unpack the audience number 3 of st john paul the second's theology of the body the second account of creation of man before we go into uh, the audience and let us uh, begin this in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen loving jesus we thank and praise you for giving us this opportunity again to come around to you so that we may understand the mysteries which are stamped right there in our bodies when you created us male and female o loving holy spirit enlighten us empower us fill in with your wisdom so that we may be able to understand all what we need to understand uh, through this session mother mary thank you for interceding for us saint john paul the second and we in a special way thank you for praying for us for guiding us let us all pray together hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen audience number 3 uh, was delivered by st john paul the second on september 19 1979 and here he is talking about the second account of creation of man in the second account of creation uh, the name which we use here for god is yahweh so god's name which is used in this account of creation is yahweh and uh, so it is called the yahwist account so he is more like a personal god here god who shaped man from the dust god who breathed into his nostrils and so on so so we can see a very personal god here very personal god with man so we can another words we can say it is the story of adam and eve their life in the garden and their fall into sin and um, this is dealing with the second chapter of genesis and uh, we see the fall in the beginning of the third chapter of genesis so we can say that it is penetrating into the subjective experience of man and woman it's more like the personal experiences are being narrated here in describing man's creation and his call to be fruitful and multiply st john paul ii points out that the elohistic account the priestly account of creation contains only the objective facts and defines the objective reality this is what we have seen in the previous session um it is more like an objective reality more like a metaphysical reality on the other hand the yahweh's account seeks to penetrate man's psychology it is going entering into the psychology of man self consciousness and self awareness and personal experiences so in doing so it presents the creation of man especially in the subjective aspect as pope states chapter 2 of genesis that is the second account of creation constitutes in some way the oldest description and record man's self understanding and together with chapter 3 it is the first witness of human conscience 
in the second account of creation in the personal experience of man and woman in the beginning we find a nucleo this is what uh, st john paul ii is using the word nucleo a tiny a small particle about self understanding who am i about uh, understanding the other who are you where am i going and what is the purpose of my life all the existential questions which we can derive from the second account of creation and again it is significant that in his reply to the pharisees in which he appealed to the beginning christ indicated first of all the creation of man by referring to genesis 127 this was the first quote which christ has done uh, with the pharisees the creator from the beginning created them male and female only afterward did he quote the text of genesis 224 the words which directly describe the unity and indissolubility of marriage are found in the immediate context of the second account of creation it is also significant that in referring to genesis 224 christ not only linked the beginning with the mystery of creation but also led us one might say to the limit of man's primitive innocence and of original sin genesis places the second description of man's creation precisely in this context there we read first of all and the rib which the lord god had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man then the man said this at last is born of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man now again he is uh, explaining about the creation of woman and the woman is taken uh, from the rib of man um many scholars are explaining this in different way they are interpreting why god took the rib of man and um, my best understanding about it is um the complementarity of man and woman one need the other to fulfill the existence and also the aspect of union and communion they are taken from the same nature the human nature both are from the same nature but they are different not one superior to the other or inferior to the other and the woman especially she is by side of man closest to his heart so ish and isha in the context of the creation of woman so saint john paul ii is um, telling here man completes his existence man find his identity after seeing the woman till then he was representing adam was representing the human being the whole human kind but from the very moment of the creation of the first woman it begins to call him man ish in relationship to isha woman because she was taken from the man and this is how uh, we need to understand how important um, the creation of man and woman we are created for union and communion we are created in the image and likeness of god and the image and likeness of god which is termed right there in our body when he created us male and female is the capacity to love to the capacity for union and communion 
with each other and with god so this is the uh, the significance of uh, creating man and woman with a different uh, body but with the same nature and therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife and they become one flesh this is the famous genesis 224 we were talking about and the man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed immediately following this passage genesis 3 begins with its account of the fall of the man linked to the tree of knowledge of good and evil genesis 2:17 um we can see it is mentioned about the tree of knowledge of good and evil so these two opposite situations which is corresponding to the two different aspects of human nature the original created nature that is the original innocence and our fallen nature christ was referring back to the beginning the created original nature of man so when christ was talking to the pharisees he was revolting he was asking them to go back to the beginning and see what god had in his mind when he created as male and female and here saint john paul ii is saying you know christ was referring back to the beginning the created original nature of man that is the original innocence even though man has lost his innocence and the hearts have grown hard god's design and plan for our body sexuality and marriage are not changed so the spousal meaning of the body it got distorted but never lost the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the line of demarcation between the two original situations which genesis speaks of the first situation was that of original innocence in which man that is male and female was as it were outside the sphere of the knowledge of good and evil until the moment when he transgressed the creator's prohibition and ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge the second situation however was that in which man after having disobeyed the creator's command at the prompting of the evil spirit symbolized by the serpent found himself in certain way within the sphere of knowledge of good and evil this second situation determined the state of human sinfulness in contrast to the state of primitive or original innocence so there is the conflict between the original innocence and the original sin so this is again the boundary is that the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the line of demarcation between the two original situation of original innocence and original sin when christ referring to the beginning directed his questioners to the words written in genesis 224 he ordered them in a certain sense to go beyond the boundary which the second account of creation is mentioning here which is running between the first and second situation of man that is which is running between the original innocence and the original sin so now uh, he is taking us back St John Paul II is taking us back with the Christ to our original nature that is our original innocence our original nature is our original innocence so Christ is asking us 
let us go back to the beginning go beyond the boundary and see what god had in his mind about man and woman what god had in his mind about marriage what god had in his mind about the sexuality the differences in the body let us um, understand a little bit about the mythical factor which is there in genesis so when we talk about genesis people think it is a myth it is not a fairy tale or a mythical story the author of the genesis was not trying to convey scientific facts in fact bible is not a book of science not a book of history so st john paul ii is uh, talking about the classical myth and the modern myth um one of the authors uh, monsignor brian bransfield um, his interpretation of the human person according to john paul ii uh, he is mentioning here uh, the human person according to john paul ii is a myth in the classical sense which tells the truth about the human person is so true that it cannot fit under microscope so again genesis is not a history book what we see in genesis is a relationship story a love story we cannot put this under microscope uh, there are so many factors which we need to understand with the aspect of relationship and love we should not be looking at it as a science book or as a history book when we ex play in a relationship we cannot analyze the expression so many things if we put under the microscope of science or history then it may not make much sense for us but we we keep under the microscope of love relationship and expression of relationship many things we can understand in a better way so that's what uh, st john paul ii is pointing out here the rationalism of the 19th century regarded myth as a product of the imagination or what is irrational he then goes on to describe the classical sense of myth as discovering the structure of reality that is accessible to rational and empirical investigation uh, this is given um, in his footnote on the audience number 3 the first point we have seen in the second account of creation story god's name is used yahweh it is called the yahwehist account he is more of a personal god in this account of creation it is the story of adam and eve their life in the garden and their fall into sin it penetrates into the subjective experience of man and woman it is the first witness of human consciousness elohistic account the priestly account of creation contains only the objective facts and defines the objective reality on the other hand the yahwehist account seeks to penetrate man's psychology in uh, in our words we have been talking about one is more of a metaphysical objective reality the other is the yahwehist account is more of a subjective reality um in the personal experience of man and woman in the beginning we find a nucleo a tiny particle about self understanding who am i understanding the other who are you where am i going all these existential questions we can see in the personal experience of man and woman and again the tree of knowledge uh, which is mentioned here the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the line of demarcation between the two original situations the original innocence and the original sin christ is asking us to go beyond the boundary and try to see what god had in his mind when he created us male and female 
the heritage of our heart is original innocence not original sin we can hear the echo the nucleo of this original innocence in our life in everything so we are not the bundle of our weaknesses our fallen nature that is not our identity our identity is something beyond the boundary the original innocence and uh, that's what the st john paul ii is mentioning about we have a theological prehistory our background our history our foundation is a theological foundation that is the original innocence the original bliss the original perfect union with one another and with god that is the the original nature not our identity is anything else the bible calls the first human being man adam but from the moment of the creation of the first woman it begins to call him man ish in relationship to isha woman because she was taken from the man ish man is finding he is identifying himself he is calling himself man in relationship with woman so much significance for the relationship between man and woman for the union and communion to love as god loves to be a self giving gift all these all these important points we can see here when man is finding meaning for his existence he is completing his existence with woman and this is what we have seen there christ referred to both the stories when he directed the pharisees back to the beginning in this way christ's words confirm that both the objective and the subjective elements of one flesh union are indispensable in establishing a proper understanding of man and woman's relationship seen here even though man has lost his innocence and the hearts have grown hard god's design and plan for our body sexuality and marriage are not changed so we didn't lose that the spousal meaning of the body the capacity to express love that is still stamped right there in our body when he created us male and female we are created for love we are created for not little bit of love eternal love that is that is why we are created for so that capacity to love the capacity to be a self giving gift it is distorted but it is not taken out of our nature when we talk about genesis it is not a fairy tale or a mythical story but it has mythical element in it so it is not a science book of science it's not a book of history it is a book of relationship it is a book of uh, love and uh, we cannot put this under microscope and say it is something wrong um and here genesis accounts are the classic myth the accounts are in a sense more than true they convey a truth too dense to fit in a fact with this i conclude here and uh, please uh, go through the Uh, original catechesis and if you have any comments or questions you are always welcome my email address and my phone number is there and you can contact me and also um, this video will be uploaded in my youtube channel babu john tob for life which you can see on the screen here and uh, if you have not subscribed yet i would recommend you please do subscribe and click on the notification button so that you will not miss any new uploads and if you like the video please give a thumbs up and also you can write some of your comments in the youtube channel
and we will see again next week and thank you god bless you all in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen